Hey, alright, this is Rogue from MCM, Main Course Monday, and I'm going to be doing a demo review of our, I guess, yeah, week two match from RGL Highlander Season 6 against Krusty Krab Esports, where, if any of you saw this match, I got my ass handed to me on a silver platter, it seemed like every 40 seconds, like, it, there was no, either there was no good option and I died, or maybe there was a good option and I just died anyway, so... I wanted to go through this and, and look through this demo and go over it myself. Um, MZM is going to be doing a demo review as like a team of you know what our team should have been doing and what like we as a group should have been doing differently. But I wanted to take a minute to go over just my own self and my own play like individually in these decisions from you know, like you know from the perspective of existence is a simulation and I'm the only being capable of free will. Did I do the right things in these scenarios, regardless of what my teammates did or didn't do? Could I have played better, is where I'm approaching this demo from. Uh, especially because we've had Zukima taking over the majority of the main calling as well, so... You know, with a match of this rough, it's hard to glean a lot of... ...overall improvements, but I'm hoping maybe I can notice some patterns or catch out whatever we're able to find, so... Let's take a look. So I start on the back spawn here, and I start healing triple right away. I think that was a very good move, because if I'm so far back, I want to get to mid a little quicker. And I do tap him again. These buffs are great. Except that it got to RJ a little bit late. What some teams will do is they'll arrow their demo right away, but RJ usually gets to mid with enough health. And he'll tell me if he gets piped, but yeah, I'll talk about that first. I get to RJ a bit late, but getting these extra crit heals on my teammates is fantastic. So if RJ, if I'm seeing RJ take spam, then I'll go onto him right away. But for example, getting our scout from 150 to 180 and our heavy from 400 to 450 are, are a huge difference compared to just getting our demo from, let's say, 100 to 125 in that same amount of time. This positioning is not great. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. Well, so I would say, you know, my flank losing control of bathhouse that bad and the sniper having the time to walk all the way there. I guess I respawn. That's, you know, hopefully we would have gotten calls on something like that and maybe I should have been playing a little bit safer, but if he got all the way into bathhouse like that and hit his first shot right away. Oh, that's just a really great shot from Nixie. And I guess I could have been playing closer to the obelisk. I've been noticing recently that I've been playing like far out, like behind the staircase and not really behind the obelisk. Like, you know, it used to be back in the day, like you would just hold with your back to the obelisk and like wait for something to happen or wait to walk or leave, right? But, you know, I'm like, well, I can't really do my heals that well and I can't, you know, if something shoots me once, then it can definitely shoot me twice and it's a long time to leave. So I've been playing out on the staircase, but then I've been taking um, the same amount of spam and not spy checking as much, so. Let's see how that position plays out for me. And that was something I noticed on our first scrim too, by the way. So I tried to get better at it leading up to this match. So let's see how that works for me. And right now we see the down three, but we have pretty bad help. Should have definitely healed triple instead of going for the second arrow on Zuki. You know, our scout could do a lot more with the crit heal than a heavy could with an extra 100 health, let's say. Especially because he's going to have crit heals and we think we should win this anyway because they said they were just down three. So getting heals on triple sooner and faster is good. This is great timing leaving. Triple did a fantastic job of getting me out. He's been like... I don't know if someone's been like whispering to him in his sleep, but... You know, as we're talking the offseason about how much we've been struggling with getting me out in time... Yeah, somehow he just like flips the switch and gets me out every time. And like, he's right next to me. So he's been doing really, really good with that. And... There was a perfect example right there where we even like bumped into the spy where you know Dermot is going to do that every time. Not even that is predictable, by the way, that Jacob does that every time. It's like, you know, even if we know what's going to happen, there's so little we can do about it. Oh, so here they had their ad and Triple got me out. I think I should have only kept the beam on Triple and kept RJ completely out. My thought in times like this is like I may as well give RJ one flash so that he... Nice shot so that he can jump if he wants, so like if he's ready to jump, then I give him that one flash. But by taking my beam off triple for that quarter second, he then got too far for my beam. So I think I should have like, for the first 50% run with triple and call to my team that I'm in deep, then for the last 50%, like use a bit of a speed boost and then, you know, have Zuki and Spring Rolls as a play across point so that I can get out for sure. Okay. 
The spot checking is great, so I'm playing in that aggro position, but we know they're still on the... Okay, pause it now. So we know they're... God damn it. <laughs> so we know they're on that repush, right? So I talked about this position isn't great. But this isn't a mid-fight now. We know they're on that repush. So whoever they're going to shoot at, you know, they're, they're going to shoot at whoever's on the point before they're going to shoot at me. So it's okay for me to play a little aggro. And now that they're in, you see I backed up where I'm not taking the same spam as like the people at the bottom of the stairs. Um, yeah, so this positioning is nice. I also think playing on this far side of the point is good. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So you can get a little bit more stuffed, especially because you don't always know what's going on with, ba with in Bathhouse, you know, at every second. So a lot of times the medic will play on that far side of point, like let's call it the lake side. I can't believe no one calls it that. But if I'm playing on the lake side of the point, it's a little bit of a walk to get out, but the team has to really extend. Like they have to not be in Bathhouse, they have to be not capping, and they have to go all the way across into our team, where like our sniper can see them from anywhere and, and on the lake side of point, so... I think it was a good call to be playing on the right side there, but after we lost one or two picks, maybe I should have already left, even though that wasn't a fight we should have lost. It's hard to say. Like, I could have gotten out and we definitely lose that fight, or I stay in and we have a chance of holding. I guess I should have left in that scenario, but... It's unfortunate. <laughs> Why does Waterson not have crit heals? Okay, so here, I try and even show a little bit in main to bait, and I'm calling to my team that, you know, they see our beam in main because I just buffed everyone. And we know their team is all over because we all just got spawns. So, I know I talked about I should, I'm not talking from a team perspective, just mine. But they're like, was the play for me to send in spawn? Definitely no. Was the plan for me to, like, hold, like, by myself in the doorway between spawn and main? Also no, like, the soldier would have killed me anyway. So I'm in main, saying they're gonna jump for me, they have all of this ground, they could come from anywhere. And you even see now their soldier inspired dead, but they got our medic and all these other combo classes, as you see on the top, so... It sounds like this, I guess, why I wanted to look at this demo. Not completely validating myself, but it's like, okay, they are like, I baited pretty far, maybe I should have been a bit deeper, but I'm calling to my team and I don't even want to run so far that, for example, if the soldier jumped behind main, our pyro and heavy could not help me at all. So, I need to be close enough where they can shoot the enemy that's shooting me, but far enough where the enemy has to really commit to get me. So, it feels like I could have obviously played a slight bit back, or maybe not totally shown in main and try to pretend like I wasn't in, but for the most part, that seemed like a pretty good play where, you know, just unfortunately out of great play from the enemies and maybe unfortunate play from my team, it happens. But, you know, it's the kind of thing that is going to happen, you know? Like, we, like, I knew that the soldier was coming and, you know... We've kind of had a problem with MCM where someone, like, I'll die, and someone's like, yeah, I called that. And I'm like, well, I know they called that, but what am I going to do realistically? So at a time like that, was the play for me to never go to mid? I don't know. This is nice. This is good spy checking. This position is okay. I'm not, like, super across point, and my teammates are pretty forward, bringing more of our heals to Bathhouse, so while we're just trying to build the super up, and we have the point. I lost track in this demo, but... I tried to make a very strong point to be calling their advantage. And yes, as soon as the team commits, and it looks like they do have add. Oh, because, yeah, JG just killed me, of course. So, yeah, we know they have advantage, but we're getting it back now. They're down scout as well, but we don't quite have Uber yet. So we're in a 3v3 with better spawns. This is nice. I want to be... They don't have a spy, but it's better to spy check too much than not enough. And I want to be playing to get out anyway. Like this edging is very good from triple and spring rolls. Get crit on our combo classes coming in. Now, I'm going to pause this. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was about to say, now we have kind of like a crucial moment, especially because they distracted with the soldier. Maybe I'll wait for the heavy. There we go. When they were distracting with the soldier. When we got our guys in, first, it didn't totally feel like we had a lot of calls on what was going on because Triple and Springles were edging and they backed up. Right now, we can see they have someone in Bathhouse, so it's not like we have that on lockdown either. So... We needed to make a call when our teammates came in. It's like, okay, are we milking this Uber where I'm trying to stay back and stay super alive? Or are we going to use it right away? Because as we saw, like, we had so few eyes on the point that as soon as they came across, I die. So we had to, like, be ready to use right away. But you can see still triples at, like, 60 health. RG just came in. Which is good. He's going to have everything loaded. But I didn't know, like, are they in main? Are they, like, on their ruins that we're just about to use on our side of the point? You know, we just didn't have the call. So I'm like, well, I know... 
I definitely can't know that we'll have a good Uber, so I may as well wait for someone to indicate that we can have an Uber, and then they just push the cross point and kill me right away with that soldier distraction. So, again, just good playing out of them, and from us, you know, no one's watching the point, and I'm not supposed to be the one to be watching the point. So maybe... I don't know. Like, yeah, we have full Uber advantage. I shouldn't be leaving. Staying was unfortunate, and going in was uncertain, so... You know, I guess these are just things to think about. It's not really a great answer anyway. Like, even if I forced early, maybe we would have only gotten one pick and they have that again, you know. So, it's hard to say, but these are the kinds of things we're looking out for here. We have secured the control point. Alert! The control point is being captured. Medic! Medic, it's pulling. I'm not thinking I want any more so now we're at a pretty big disad. We played a lot of players pretty late, but we have better spawn, so it's not that bad. So they called now, so now I'm saying like way in spawn because I know as soon as I show they're gonna they're gonna come after me. Now I'm kinda showing a little bit because I'm with my pyro and heavy. But now is kind of the play where it's like, okay, we have to force them and have me run. This is a bit aggressive of a positioning, but we're calling where they are, and yeah, you can see. I have a pretty good line out where Spring Rolls is watching that door to air blast. Yeah, I probably should have been staying more even with Triple than with um, Spring Rolls. We saw that also Bathhouse there was a little rough. I normally would have hugged to the left, but they still had players in Bath. And now it's like we force out their Uber. There's 10 seconds left. I have to commit, right? Like I can't just leave and go back to spawn and just give up the round completely so that I stay alive. Yeah, maybe the call should have been to, like, ball up around me and have, like, the three or four players alive. Like, stay on me and around me. Like, protect the president kind of style. Why do I have a different spawn from the first round? I thought it was, like, you have the same same one for the entire half. Yeah, I <laughs> walked in the wall there. Uh, luckily, asked Penguin to whip me. Very kindly, he does. So it seems like a very passive mid from them, or a bathhouse mid, so I'm trying to get my heals a little more aggro. Crit healing Watterson, very important. You'll see I'm tapping around a lot too to just see who has crit heals, and also like, yeah, just to see who has crit heals. So this is nice, we're calling to play me on point, I think we're discussing like if their sniper is deep on the back right, then I can lock onto point the, the, the default way. This is nice tapping on as well to who has crit heals, like, Spring had crit heals there, but Zuku was closer to the point, so I say on him for that extra, like, three quarters of a second. Seems like pretty good heal priority, I, as with all cough, like, any percentage I could give to triple, I should. Like, I should always be healing him more, like, even if I'm healing him 99%, it should be 100, but... That was a great Uber, and their sniper's dead, so we walk across here. This is a great call from Zuki. I like my positioning as well. We called they were bath and leaving ruins, so I go on the very far, like, you have to commit very deep to me. Uh, I don't know what the call was on their spy. It could be the only issue with that play. Yeah, that was well played. Yeah, oh, and I guess surf. Alright, yeah, you know. Because now, like, it's a play to just give up the point. Like, we have even numbers, like a slight add. We spam them out a lot. They do have better spawns than us here. And even if I try to leave, like... So, let's take that as an example as well. They just had... You know, we were calling to still be fighting, and if I wanted to leave, I would have had to leave, like, a very long time ago while we were still winning that fight, it felt like. Or maybe I could have spaced it, like, hedged my bets by spacing it in the middle, but... Uh... When they have like four players on point and we're all ramp, the play is definitely not for me to leave main. But they're also shooting us from bathhouse. So like if I got too close to bath, I definitely die. If I try and go towards main and leave, then I also definitely die. So now I'm just kind of prolonging my death and we're even like close to Uber. This is great that we get these, but now I fear the sniper. I want 90%. So yeah, even if we give them the capture and go back in, that's fine. We just gotta get there <laughs> with no spy. Yeah, but ah, oh, Sarah for the team one. You ever heard Demento? Got him. Hey, 
So here, their sniper is still watching me. Like, we called their sniper's bathhouse. That sucked. Like, we're pushing there, but we had no spies, so no one could get on the sniper. And we had the call that their sniper is bathhouse. So we're like, yeah, we have Uber ad on them, or at least we're even. We need to go in and use. But then the sniper is, like, in bath watching me, like, hard scoping this angle. And I don't know. Like, you know, if I stayed, I stayed and delayed for a long time. I'm like, okay, if we have no spy, at least our combo players can get close enough where they spam or at least distract the sniper, right? But Nixie makes a huge play and really, really smart call to go onto ruins and shoot from there because our combo isn't going to be looking there. But it's like, fuck, should I have, like, come out in main and used right away when they were in baths or Uber was over before we get there? Or, you know, should I have run right away trying to do, like, the ODB shuffle of just moving my camera all around and hoping I don't get headshot and waiting for someone to say that I'm walking into a trap or something because I'm not looking? I don't know. So it just sucks that, like it felt like a lot of impossible situations like this, right? Where it's like, okay, if I go in, I definitely die. If I wait, maybe someone can get on the sniper for a little bit and then we could do something. But like what realistically, what was I supposed to do there? I'm going to remember this tick. Um, I'll say, I'll save that one. And we'll, we'll go back to that tick just before um, we go to the second half. that was like the most egregious example i think there was a stat line where i had something like two ubers in the first half which is admittedly only two rounds but still what on average of one uber per round or each round is maybe four minutes five minutes it's a, yeah not good even there was even like even in these like really tight like difficult spots like we're getting me out with the ad like we have the right plan there and you know, we got me out that time I was holding on ramp, and we got me out ruins with 40 health on the two mini packs. So again, we're trying to go for this even, like, off uber push. Their sniper is in bath or on point, and our sniper is trying to take the fight. So I'm healing our sniper and waiting and waiting and waiting, and now time's ticking off the clock, and they're getting their Uber, which, you know, we're just, like, trying to force out and stuff. And, you know, if I'm alone with our sniper, I can't really do anything against a spy anyway. So either I had to save for a different combo class, like Heavier Pyro, to not go in during that time, I guess, or I sit and spawn, but I'm not building with anyone. Yeah, I think the play is I just call for, like, someone to stay with me in Watterson. Because even if I spy check, like, we'll see later. There's a time where, like, even when I'm looking directly at Demento, I still die. Now here we know they don't have Uber, and we have some pretty bad time on the clock, and I'm getting rolled anyway. So there I got, like, a little bit too deep and too aggressive, but at this point we're also, like, desperate for time. And they just completely collapsed on us, so... You know, maybe if I left, we could have had an Uber before this last fight, but I don't know. Even if I get an Uber now, they're definitely going to have Uber too. So I think that was worth the risk. Healing triple in this time is the most important. That was very good. Um, I should have actually had him, like, playing more with me. There's another example of, like, I could have run farther out, but it's overtime. Like, if we don't get this capture, we lose the game. So if I had run all the way out to spawn, that wouldn't be that helpful, and the soldier would still kill me anyway. So, I think staying there where my team could have come close enough and all that. Yeah, we just lose this. Okay, so I'm gonna go to that tick before we go on to the next half. As long as this doesn't crash my demo. watching these with view models. I don't play with view models, so it looks a lot more slick. Alright, so, it uh, looks like maybe I estimated a little late. Oh, see, so our heavy is, like, just coming now, but, like, we're calling, we have even or add on them, but their sniper is still bath. Still bath. Yeah, like, they used from bath 
Like, I guess I could have used just by myself on nobody and then run to my team to try and save the people who are getting walked up from Bath. So, like, I guess... <laughs> but, like, isn't that such a shitty situation where it's like... I'll just stop this. Where it's like, okay, the best... <laughs> the Based on the circumstances, the best thing to do was for me, by myself, with no one around of my team or the enemy team, was to just use Uber. That's a problem. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's like, yeah, again, I could have, like, that was the best call, but in general, that's never the best call, right? So, uh, it sucks. Let's, uh, look at the next half. Yeah. Wow. That was rough. Like, it's so, like, maybe we should have gone main or something, I don't know, but they had main a lot more traps, where, like, we can get them for free on the far right. But, for me, going up against that long-range class, it's like, well, I can't get them for free, though. <laughs> Right? So now Arjun's pretty hurt, so I'm gonna tank him full time. I'm not hungry. So I'm gonna diet. Arjun runs those keto mids. That's nice, I think. So our combo is healthy enough, and our flank is very hurt towards Bath, so I think flinging that arrow, whether it hit Aaron or triple, was a very good call, actually. This is a nice mid. Like, that was, that was very heads up, because, you know, you normally think healing the demo is most important, but our flank were the people hurt and needing to get that control, and no one was shooting at RJ with a full buff, so... Uh, I was very lucky to have the liberty to not heal him. You hear we're trying to tank Watterson. Don't forget, when people say they're tanking the sniper... Where's my demo menu? When people talk about tanking the sniper, of course the heavy just starts shooting. Okay. When people talk about tanking the sniper in these kinds of holds, as part of medic stats, a buff on all classes, like on any class, takes 10, 10 seconds to fade, no matter what. So, if I heal Waters into um, 185, then after like 3 or so seconds, he'll only be down to, he'll like still be above headshot range. So, when you talk about tanking a sniper, what you really want to do is like, Tap your sniper to get him 185, then spend a second healing someone else with crit heals. Then tap your sniper back up, and then again. So you saw there, I had my beam off Waterson, for example, and then he got headshot, or full charge body shot, I don't know. But then we're able to get back on him and bring him back up. But it's just a little bit better management of how to tank a sniper. Is like, whether they're 75, 175 or 185 doesn't actually matter. But for all of these other classes, like if we're here for 10 seconds, you know, if crit heals, that's 750 health to the rest of my team. So that's absolutely matters. So, you know, when you're, when you're tanking sniper, it's, you're mostly healing them, but keep tapping crit heals to whoever else you can. So they use very early. We hear that call from the medic and um, I wait until I'm in danger or RJ's in danger. So that was a good use. Interesting. So I just am noticing now I don't go back into bathhouse. I think that is a good move because if I'm in there and then like smaller area, we talked about we can only hold bath if we have our sniper and we have full uber and maybe a demo is alive. I forget the third thing we talked about as a team. But for me to go back in that room with no uber is dangerous because I can just get juggled by something and die or something could push from ruins while we're fighting point and I die. So. That was a very good call, I believe, to not fight in Bathhouse after Uber. Especially because I can still heal my Heavy and Demo, who are fighting main. The only problem is if something comes far from the flank or comes from behind me. And surprise, surprise, look where I'm looking. Oh, Watterson gets a huge headshot anyway. That's sick. So now we're healing triple for the cleanup, RJ, to try and put some damage in. My next target was Watterson there, as you saw me. But, um, he just, uh... Triple went down very low, so he got priority. You can see I'm still spy checking here. I had a problem years ago where I would not spy check at all, and so now, oh Jesus Christ. Oh boy. Wait, uh, at risk of breaking the demo, I'm going back to that. Oh. So, yeah, I had a problem seasons ago. Uh, years ago, rather, where I would just not spy check enough, especially in, like, critical moments, so now I'd rather spy check two, or, like, I found out how much I can spy check while still getting my heals out right, where, like, I pick a heal target, 
stay on them for a quarter of a second and I set my sensitivity so one flick of my arm is a 180. So I do two, like click on someone and do two flicks with my arm, then either keep on them or flick someone else and then do another two flicks. So I'd rather do too much spy checking than not enough. But how the fuck does he still stab me? So I'm taking triple. I'm spy checking, shoot my arrow. Still spy checking. Still spy checking. Medic, it's pulling. I've got something I wanted you to look like you saw how how uh, frequent that was. That was like less. I think it takes one second for a decloak to happen, and that was about one spy check every second. So like you're gonna see the spy. He must. I don't know. Like maybe he was like already decloaked and was standing behind obelisk. Is my only guess. But Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, this is Demento, best buy in the game. It's not like, you know, I can't, as a medic, you know, it's not like I can really be perfect and, like, get him every time, or, like, even if I see him again, this doesn't always mean everything. Looks like I got the dagger of Satan. <sighs> yeah, another one of those times where, like, maybe once we lost, like, three players, I should have left, but we were in such a good position, and then we, it seemed like I almost instantly lost three players in that hole. So I probably should have left like as soon as we had like a number advantage a uh, number disadvantage of two mm, but i don't know all right now we're going for that bathhouse sack and then we were saying like ha for me to commit and then i died and then we said i don't commit and then something flanked me and then we said i don't commit with a player and then we said i do commit so i got all kinds of confused what our strategy was there I think this is fine, and thank you to Triple for healing, for like letting me heal him rather. The Uber. So, oh, I guess we did get the force. And so it looks like we're trying to go back in here. So now my thoughts are where is the spy? And also, there he is. So, like, the spy soldier behind us, I walk forwards. That's very good because if I walk backwards into them, I would definitely have died. Yeah, this, that was great positioning. I really like that. Healing our demo and scout. This is very good as well. We're kind of getting ready to use Uber, but they're now four. So I'm trying to call it to the team. Like, I do not want to use. We win this. Just get cap time back up if you need. We win this point for free. And Evil even gets the med. So now, we're, you know, we should really be playing around me. They, they should be sacking. So I'm calling to my team. They are going to come in for me. They should jump for me. Play with me here. We've been trying to stay with Triple, who I think should be protecting me in this situation. Especially when we're four down. So now... Yeah. Oh. So that was interesting. So first of all, every time JJ jumps, he's been sinking rockets on me. Uh, so... Or like, he'd shoot one from almost a skybox and land on me with another. So I, you saw from one or two of those deaths, I would die like right away. And second, I was on a roller. So like, if I could take like at most 110 from JJ and like 40 from the roller, I'm like... With how few Ubers we've had so far, and I kind of spent the whole first half milking, and like knowing that these aren't going to be good Ubers. So now I'm like, you know what? Let's just use an Uber, even if it's going to be shitty. Because here again, we have full advantage, or almost full advantage now, however long Bolt's been up. So it's like, okay, if I'm on the roller and JJ's in, I just use and don't drop again. And this positioning is great. I actually very much like this call with it because their combo's out. Like the demo's dead, that was great, and Bolt shouldn't have committed there. So we just clear our bathhouse and get it for our flank. That was a, a very heads up play. How to salvage that Uber a little bit, but now they have pretty big ad. They should be, I guess, something like maybe 60 or so right now. 70. But I'm also calling it to my team as well. Demento's already in position. <laughs> Great five for these guys. So good arrows for our flank. JJ just comes in. Yeah, I'm there in the middle of five of our four of our teammates, plus our flankers are watch have bathhouse on lock. So really I'm within seven of our players. Uh, or six of our players, and I just die from two shots by the soldier. Like, I can never get upset, and again, this is not about my teammates, it's about what I should do, but there is like there's nothing. You know. Like I guess I could have been playing slightly in a different spot, but right there I was in the middle of all of our teammates. I was in a spot where I could back out with their ad. I could um bring heals to point as well. I think that position was good. 
I'll never ever get upset with my team if the soldier gets one shot off. But the soldier should not be allowed to get two shots off is kind of the rule. Especially not like three or four is when it gets into real bad territory. Yeah, though he just like jumped in a straight line and fired two rockets to kill me. With everyone there, you know. And again, like JJ's very good and the team had a lot of pressure and my team is waiting for heals. And, you know, there's a bunch of factors, so it's not actually their faults, but Again, we're just kind of coming at this from my own perspective. Like, nice job dodging the stickies there, but like, now I just get walked out by Demento, you know, even with my team around. So, the call, we called for me to get out. The only thing I should have done there was get out. And I go to get out, and I can't kill the spy, right? And I wasn't really ahead. I, our scout was ahead of me, so I wasn't, you know, getting ahead of my teammates. We even had a pyro with us. I'm just about to hitting some sick shots. What else are you gonna do? This is great healing. Nice crit heals on triple, then back to Aerotech now heavy. Crit heals on RJ now. This is flawless. This is fantastic. Oh my god! Damn. He doesn't stop! Jesus Christ. That's so... That's incredible. I think after this demo review, I'm going to ask if Rogel saw my medigun. That was unbelievable. This is very good positioning, too. So we know how hurt they are, and I know how healthy our team is. So, in that situation, you saw I got very aggro on the point. So not only... Something else interesting to keep in mind is not only are we so healthy because, you know, whoever was in had a crit heal buff before that fight, whoever got out was getting arrows. So we had like perfect, the perfect efficiency of how to use our heals. So first, you can usually assume that the other team is not going to be perfect, especially with their spawners and the crazy chaos at the end of the round. The defenders kind of have that advantage. And the other part was... You know, they only have so much ammo, right? So if their scout's, like, fired off six shots, he has to start reloading, and then maybe switch to pistol, and their demo has to reload stuff, and their heavy only has so many shots left. So once I know how much better our heals are, how much better our positioning is, and how little ammo the enemies have, then it's like, okay, we go and win this right now. I'm not going to just stay back and, you know, potentially drop one or two guys, which turns into five, which turns into the round. So that was phenomenal. <laughs> I finally like, forgot that happened. <laughs> there was so much PTSD from this match that, like, finally something worked and, you know, you're just so depressed. It's like, yeah, I guess something went right for once in my life. Blasting the Lincoln Park and the eyeliner. They got real studded belt. That's great positioning. Look at this from Demento and um, Oblivion. We freaking talked to Spring World so many times about the jetpack. And, like, I do not think it's a joke. You know, I understand. I understand spring rolls, but damn. Like, that was pretty sick, especially to decloak with the spy at the same time. And, like, that was without their soldier, too. I don't know what their soldier is doing, but, like, yeah, I guess you're sacking three players, but you're all the way across point, and the enemy team has no more heals. It was just very, very well done from them. I think I spaced it well enough, I think. You know, I can't... Once the guys are in, like, I can only prepare for it happening. I can't really do much when it happens. Especially because if a soldier comes in, I can at least surf it somewhere and have an idea of where I want to finish that exchange. Or, like, how I want to deal with that aggression. Fish building. That was, like, such a freaking spy. I probably should have run there, but I, th I actually think I did think that was spring rolls. <laughs> like, like uh, uh, well, what's the, what's the one from, um... Uh, no, not Goldilocks. Little Red Riding Hood, right? It's like, my grandma, what a... <laughs> what weird strafing you have as you walk towards me. I don't remember you having a knife, grandma. That also looks like a spy. I think I'd check it, but it's like... Okay, so now Demet is still alive. He's, he got out, and they're pressuring me from point. We also just lost four. It's kind of a miracle that I survived here, but the spy is still up and snooping around. Someone got the dagger of Satan. I guess it was RJ. I had... I had I'm so upset I, I let it go to waste. Uh, something I've been planning in my shit-talking before this match, which... Man, I wish the log recorded the pre-match because we were going off in that trap, but... 
I wanted to set my alias to to say number of shitty JJ bombs, and then every time it failed the bomb on me, I would change my name to be like one, and then two, and then three every time it failed. But obviously, since I play medic, I don't like if the bomb failed, then I'm still alive and can't take the time to change my name. So I thought that was a great idea. It would have been a ton of fun, but you know, sometimes the best laid plans. Okay, this is great spacing. We healed our scout all the way, and now we send our demo man. One flash onto our heavy, and get back in with our demo. Great. This is fantastic. But that was perfect. Very well done. I think even healing our demo scout after Uber would have been a bit nicer. I do like this aggressive positioning while their sniper is dead and we need to cap. But you saw, <laughs> you saw like one um, Jarrett pipe flew past me, and it's like, okay, I guess I have to leave. But even so, I know I can take one and back up, so it's not like I was putting myself in that much danger. <laughs> Something important for a medic, I think, with your team, is figuring out your player's body language. Which is a weird thing to say, but... For some people, with giving them arrows, like, if they stop moving, sometimes they'll start moving again. Or for another player, they'll walk at me in a straight line when they want an arrow, but some other guy will just keep doing what he's doing and not, but still want the arrow, you know, so. I feel like something that's so, so strong about me and RJ that's very underrated is I know exactly how to hit, like, every arrow onto RJ because we played together for so long and, you know, I know exactly what it means when he stops or when he calls medic compared to when he took the damage and things like that and with whatever else is going on. So I, I feel like I can just hit whenever I need to on RJ. Or if you contrast it with Zuki, who's only playing heavy for us just this week as the, the first week, you'll see sometimes I'm like, I think he's going to stay in here, but actually he went out. And I'm like, oh, he should back up now, but then he moves forward. So I keep missing these arrows because his body language is new to me. So... Understanding the body language of different teammates will make your arrows like you'll double your accuracy on whoever it is that you're trying to arrow So that's super useful if someone's watching this that you know, maybe you're seeing some arrows and things that Hopefully you could take into your own game, but it's so underrated, you know, obviously no one talks about that How I, I don't talk about it either, but something I noticed and I'm very very grateful for is you playing a pug or something or even just having Zuki come in like one ninth of our roster being different, or Penguin 2, two ninths of our roster being different, suddenly my arrows on those two players are half what they are, half the accuracy of everyone else. This healing is great, by the way. So, um, oh my god. I cannot, I watched this play so many times. We gotta go back to that. We'll go back to it at the end, because I don't even want to talk about it right now. Uh, I'm just gonna save that. Anyway, that was, that healing was great though. Like I healed our demo scout forward on point. Our heavy had crit heals and was playing obelisk. So with him at 450, he could take a fight very soon. And I'm staying back closer to ramp, like not taking the damage from the main stairs. Like I've been saying, has been a problem for me a little bit. I teleport so we can find his hell, but I'm not gonna fall for it because we have three players alive. I found out in um, one of our scrims, I thought these torches would do damage to you like they do on Egypt, but uh, they do not. I spent a lot of time in spawn <laughs> this week, thinking about my feelings. Great picks from Watterson. So their sniper and scout, like that's the best you could ever ask for, except the medic basically. But honestly, I would rather get a pick on their sniper than the medic for pushing on this far right side. Like they use here, but we just saw Demento, and I have to be looking back for him. That's so fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Demento's behind us. I'm looking backwards, Triple's looking backwards. And here at this point, Aaron had called, there's a soldier behind us in our spawn. And I remember him being upset because he's like, Yo, I called that there was going to be a soldier on a medic. But it's like, okay, me and Triple got out. Triple can fight a spy and can probably fight a soldier. But, like, what else do we do? You know, the soldier just has to hit two rockets and there it, there it is. So I spaced myself well with the Uber. I got out while still watching closely for the spy and being ready for the soldier. But their combo's getting very close to us. You even see these guys who are with me just now, like RJ and Watterson. Like, they killed our sniper, you know. 
So the Uber is going to be very close. And I can't, like, I can't stay where I am. I certainly can't go in, so I have to leave. But then when I leave, you know, it's like, oh, but the spy and soldier are behind us in our spawn. So this is why I wanted to watch the demo. It's like, man, I feel like there are so many of these impossible situations, and here it actually was one of those. You know, medic, as a medic, you're at the mercy of your teammates and what your team is doing at the time for the most part. And this is, I guess, one of those best examples because just ate it. Great play, though, from JJ and from Demento. It was very, very smart from them, too. Like, can't take that away. Like, you play against any other team, and I live there, you know? Now I must commit. I'm baiting a bit, and now I'm probably going to run with triple. Great. Bringing heals on RJ and triple the most. I get bombed by um, Oblivion, and I do call it, too. But, yeah, we're in that situation to get where my team's like, okay, do I leave the points in overtime to protect our medic, or do I just let him die in cap? So, another scenario where my positioning was great, my healer was perfect, something bombs into me, and no one's able to block it. Damn, what a match! I was hoping I'd find some like amazing insight or something. Instead, I'm, I just eat shit and die. This is a fantastic match, though. Like, even though I got destroyed and we lost, obviously. Man, this was a lot of fun. Like, these guys we're playing against are so fantastic. And I really like having Zuku be in the main column as well. It feels a lot stronger, too. Great calling on the spy. So our combo's very hurt on the left side, so in times like that, we want to call to them how hurt we are, because Triple is also hurt, so I may as well heal Triple who's close to me, and Scout can just do the most anyway. I should have left already. Yeah, I should have left already. But, like, we we do, we, like, kind of styled that out, though. Like, now we have numbers advantage, and are winning that mid after getting that many heals, and definitely some clutch picks from our teammates, so... Like, we won that. I probably should have left sooner and then just come back in after five seconds or something. But, yeah, you get a little bit baited where it's like we need all the time and rounds we can get. So I just kind of wanted to stay in. Yeah, it was great heal priority for my team. Great arrows. I was trying to milk there, but Jared hit a very good second sticky there. And I, I was just sandwiched. It was a great time to leave, too. Perfect timing for arrows. Spy checking between each arrow. Very, very nice. We have full advantage now. We're calling... Okay, they should go for a play on me. You see, I'm like a freaking owl. Spinning and spinning. And now we just got called Spy's Bathhouse, so that's great, too. Obviously, as you're from Spy South in my century. I would, in general, like to heal Watterson more, but just part of Watterson... In, like, across this map. But part of Watterson's play... I'll pause it because it looks like something's going to happen. Just part of the way Watterson plays is he doesn't, like, play the beam, really, or, like, play with the combo as much. Like, he talks about he gets bored playing with the combo, so that's fine. And also, with it being lakeside, like, it's so good to send it, like, the sniper's nest, or on the bridge, over, like, in main and bats, or on ruins, or in pathhouse. So there's so few times I would even get to tank him for a while, like, unless we're holding on point. But even then, it's like, how often do we do that, so... I think, though, it would have really helped in this match if we could have played off Watterson more to open up some picks, because they're getting so many picks from however they're getting them, and we're not getting picks, so we have to kind of do whatever we can. Like, is it coordinating Soldier Spy, maybe? Popping Sniper? Perfect. Um, you know, healing our scout even more and taking more aggressive fights on point? Sure. You know, I think something I should keep in mind now that I'm watching this demo is, like, if I go the whole first half not really seeing Watterson or like sitting on him to get an opening to go in at all and we're still losing this hard, I should reach out to him and say like, listen, play with our combo for a little bit, just wait until you get a pick or two and then it'll be alone. So there I looked right at RJ to see if he needed an arrow or not. He's only missing 50 health, so that's a no. And now RJ's pretty hurt and we're calling that we need to go in and we've also lost so many players already. Now, with Crescent going this deep, yeah, that's a little bit rough. So with Crescent going that deep, I'm like, surely our team will handle it. But we're down three already. Some are in bath. Arj is in the Uber, so it's like one or two guys are behind. It's just spring rolls. So now to Arj, who they're already their demo is dead. I should say to Arj, like, all right, I'm off you. I'm sure I did. Like, I'm off Arj. I'm flashing behind. And Uber was fading anyway, so that was good positioning and spacing. <laughs> Trade with Oblivion. Gave it to him in the chat. 
Yeah, like, again, good play from Oblivion. Like, I got out. I could have gotten out a quarter second faster, but even if I, like, stayed behind Obelisk, he would have been on me anyway, so... Just good play from him, and we lost too many players in that Uber, even though it was a good Uber exchange. So we're now Sniper Spy. We do have a good time on the clock, though. I didn't buff Waters in there. Obviously, I should have. Maybe we were like talking strats or something. And now I buff Waters in? Oh, we were going for a sack, I guess. I see. I should have buffed him either way. That was stupid not to, but. Spidey Cloak? No? Oh my god. That, I'm so lucky. So unbelievably lucky. That's a degreaser afterburn with one health per second. That. So now I'm healing Waterson because we're in a long range fight. Like, RJ and Triple can do something if they go in, but they have to cross so much distance compared to Waterson to be effective. And I'm going to be healing RJ and um, Triple now anyway for this Uber. So now I'm fearing that sniper. Triple's just like, alright, let's just go. The sniper luckily wasn't looking at me for that short while. RJ took so much damage that I wanted to use, and this is that anyway. We have to go in fast. Oh my god, Triple gets bowl. That's so sick. I'm very, very lucky. Triple's been very good too with like, oh, what is this base on, on ruins? Oh yeah, easy, so simple. Shitty JJ bombs one. Yeah, that was a great surf. I, maybe I'll remember that that tick as well. Um, okay, I will talk about that again later. Nice heal priority here, spreading out the crit heals to the classes that need it the most. Very nice. Getting picks, especially on Sniper and Spy. Like, look at that. That I'm so wide open now. Staying in healing our classes deep. We got very deep spam off of this. These are, like, great reactions. You know, I feel like we kind of have an idea of what we should be doing based on the picks and on the scenario. But, like, executing it feels like something completely different. Like, I'm about to have 95% and I'm probably going to die anyway. You know, <laughs> just based on how this match went. I should be healing Waterson more here. There we go. Nice find from Spring Rolls. While Waterson's rotating, he doesn't need the heal, but he needs it at the. Oh, what a flash! the reaction time okay this is a little bit like disjoint like triple running so far away with the uber maybe that's a conversation i should have with triple about something like this because in these exchanges a lot of times like he knows kind of what we're trying to do and i know what we're trying to do and we've had talks about like in the preseason like getting me out a lot earlier in uber so i don't die after uber but if the whole Uber is for triple, I think, like, he's been going and, like, getting really deep and knowing he has that whole 100% to use, but I think maybe it, he would do a lot better if he came at it from the perspective of imagining if the medic did not have the speed boost, right? Because here, what really should be happening is, I'm, like, kind of standing at the top of our stairs, triple's killing every single person he can see and is spacing out the point and just staying alive. Right? And then we're waiting for the rest of our team to come in so they can support me on my way out. And I can even flash them if, like, a soldier comes back in or RJ gets healed and wants to get a flash. So, really, with our scout, like, we're just kind of spacing out the point right there. Getting a pick of someone overextends, but just putting enough damage to keep them back. That's the whole point of the Uber. But then when Triple goes and, like, snakes to the far side of the point, we have to really extend to flash him. And then goes behind their obelisk. I'm like, okay, there's no way. Like, in no universe should I commit that deep. So, yeah, maybe I should talk to Triple where, like, our with how to play the beam in our ubers especially like later in the uber well we have times like an advantage where he has to go and die for the med but there's a lot of other times like, even if the med will have add it's better for him to stay alive because even look at his health right now he has 12 health if you look on the top right so 
Let's watch in slow motion what happens after this Uber. I'm gonna watch it at half speed. About. So I'm tanking RJ, this is good. Tap spring rolls for the crit heals when he's close enough, perfect. I take a pipe, I take another pipe because it sends the fire cross point. I would have died if I went up the ramp anyway. Okay, that's not as interesting as I hoped it would be in slow motion. Oh, so this is the quick fix now. Okay, you remember what I just talked about with playing the beam? Let's see what happens here. We have 15 seconds. I'm waiting to heal the rest of our team. No fear, take that body shot. Okay, you can fear a little bit, but let's let's gonna move on. Okay, buffer gun. Soldier who wants to jump, or heavy who gets the most overheal. Getting the pack as well, fantastic. Healing RJ next. I love this. Our soldier's gonna go deep on the flank. It's really spreading out our heals, calling that spy. This is phenomenal. Now heal spring rolls. I should have healed spring rolls a bit earlier on that Uber. And now look, the triple is so far gone. Like he knew where I was, and we were all playing from the same spot. Especially because like I just got ran out by the pyro. So I think because of quick fix on scout is like the so dumb, especially in overtime, how good it is. Because I now you have the speed boost anyway, but he gets so much health so fast and does such incredible damage in so many jukes and gets in and out so quickly that like really playing the beam is the name of the game with the quick fix. So playing the beam is the name of the game and it's overtime and it's quick fix. So I think there having triple play like very close to me and tight to our combo in that moment anyway, like not in general, just in that time, it's like the, what the goal is. Because it's now like, should I have run all the way around the world with triple? I think no, especially because I got bombed. You know, I couldn't, like they cut off between me and triple because he was already so far. So that's definitely a big takeaway. Oh, fuck, I have to play the demo again to do those, um, to go to those ticks. But that's a big takeaway from this, this demo review is that I have to talk to triple about how to, um, play the beam a little bit better in these, like, when he's with our combo. Hello? Oh. So, like, in Ubers, how to play the beam, and, you know, over time. It's like, even with these team fights in general, but, like, on a mid, for example, it's a little more, like, you have a little more leeway, because there's so many other people I have to heal, and, like, a lot of different people could do some work. Anyway, let's look at this example from... When <laughs> I want to watch this in slow motion, honestly, but I think it's in a little bit. Okay, so we're at Uber now. I'm gonna put this in slow motion. I'm, I just said let's do 30. Okay, so good heals on my team. Nice heal on Watterson. Check for a quick crit heal. No, Power is walking up to me. So it's. I am one of the, I think it's a dying breed of medics who use click to heal, like who use click and hold to heal instead of just click. But I kind of thought it might have been spring rolls for a second, and then, um, but like I only heal him for like, what, five health or something before, because this body language is too strange. So I know it's a spy for sure. But I'm watching him perfectly, obviously with interp and stuff, I could get backside, but let's watch like very slowly what happens here. Now I'm going to 12%. So I got my eyes on him. Butter knife. My team is still in bath. And I just take two revolvers. So stupid. Like, that was so good from Jacob. Like, yeah, to hit those... Like, to hit the butter knife and two shots so quickly while he's surfing away and getting shot by other people. It was really, really, really good from him. So... That's more his excellence than my um, shortcoming. The only critique, I guess, there is the crossbow. Like, we talked a little bit about, for me, with finding spies, is that um, I'll take out my crossbow, like, too much, which I do agree with in general. But in this scenario, I think... So we knew their team was on their side of the point and were very far back. And look, I had no teammates with me. Like the closest guy I had was my heavy obelisk and all of my flank in bath. So if I use there, I get to flash someone when I'm at about 20%. But if I am deep enough to flash someone at that 20% of Uber left, like where they're getting into a fight, then I'm going to die after Uber. So 
you know, you've seen all those things pop it, don't drop it. This is one of those times where it's, I think it's better to drop it and not pop it. Where, like, it's be way better to take that risk of that I'm going to drop it than to just have a terrible, terrible Uber that's not going to accomplish anything. So, there, though, like, so, if, so okay, if I just use, like, watch at him, and then as soon as he shot me once, I use. Maybe I just use the Uber and run straight out. That would have been almost as bad as dying anyway. Or maybe I use it and try and, like, sack into their team and I die after Uber. Also not a great play. But if, let's say I think, like, because it's a spy and I'm surrounded by so many teammates, I'd say there's normally, like, especially against any other spy, there's maybe, like, a 60-70% chance I'm, I'm fine after that. So it's either a 60 or 70% chance to have a very good Uber and actually contest the point, or a 100% chance that our Uber does all, basically nothing. So... I think it was the play where, like, that extra 45 damage from the crossbow could have stopped him from hitting that second shot on me. You know, the butter knife in one shot, if I hit the crossbow, then, you know, maybe he dies. Like, I don't know how much health he had when, when I died, I didn't see, but I think that was a very good scenario to take out the crossbow. Because that's something, too, that people don't talk about is crossbows are free when you are when you have Uber. Like, they build Uber a little bit slower, but when you have Uber, unless you're getting ready to force it, use crossbows all the time, because there's really nothing to lose. Like, even into the enemies who do damage, if you have all your crit heals and everything, just because, you know, you don't have to worry about building anymore. Just don't drop it. If you're going for fun, fun arrows. Alright, let's go to that last one. That's so stupid, like, in situations like that, where we're like, yeah, there's spies all over a medic, and I'm like, well, fuck, how much can I do? So they have a spy butter knives me and gets two shots instantly. Like, that's just over one second and I'm dead. Really not much. Ah, so triple... I forgot what this play was. So triple goes in very deep with the beam and is going to die for bowl. Zuki is in a very good spot here where he can kind of shoot at anyone who's coming towards me and can put extra pressure onto bowl. RJ gets that extra little flash in case suddenly tries to shoot him on his way in. Healing Waterson on the way with crit heals, where he's going to fight their sniper soon. Fantastic also. Oh, this is when they go to sack for me. Right. And again, it's common knowledge, first in general, but second, I'm saying to my team, if we as soon as we kill their med, they should die for me. So, we had, like, triple went in very deep to kill Bull. Zuki, we just saw on the flash, was in deep, too. How Oblivion gets all the way across the point, I don't know. But, right. Maybe we'll watch this and... In slow motion too. Oh yeah, we had like a good Uber here. So like they have an engine nest with their sniper on bats. Evil's on it now, but like, man. I don't know, maybe I should talk to our flank too about what they should be doing in Ubers because they're not in on the Uber. So they should be clearing the flank here. But if their flank is fully set up on our flank, that means either our flank is in the uber taking down like near the uber taking damage that they shouldn't or they're like in spawn not doing anything so maybe i should talk to them or maybe they were coming in to go for the sack too like maybe penguin wanted to go for a bomb onto bowl as well but anyway i'm going to set this to let's do 30 speed and let's see what happens here so here i'm trying to create distance between me and the flames and i know behind me is safe so that was very good now jj comes from behind me towards spawn getting up on the high ground here is very nice Walking under the soldier is always very underrated, and I know exactly when he's going to shoot me. This is perfect. I remember why I wanted to watch this again. That was gorgeous. Let me grab the pack go back in. And my team, I remember they were saying, like, something they are yelling at me. I just want to watch it one more time. See if I can articulate it a little bit better how good it is to walk under soldier and stuff like that. Like the smaller ideas going on in my head. Hmm. See, I feel like even though this was a really rough match, like there were so many times like this where I feel like I played very well. And given the constraints, like if you were to put Nursi in this situation, like how much better could Nursi have done? I mean, the answer is very much better. <laughs> but still, I, I think you know it's still interesting looking back here, and like this was a lot of fun to play and. I kind of got owned, but so many in so many of these situations, there's very little I could have done. Or, like, the little I could have done would have changed it by, like, 10 or 20%. You know? Or, like, those times I was locked out by Nixie on our ruins. The sniper watching me from our ruins when I had full Uber. It's like, okay. I could have had a really shitty Uber or dropped it. So it's like, if, when I'm already in that situation where I have to make that choice, it, it's, it sucks already. So let's break this apart here. 
So triple goes very deep. We see the demo and heavy close. So I tank triple with the extra speed boost, and now at 45% I started turning around. Tap our heavy, who I believe has crit heals. Fantastic. And look at how much health he's left with too after this Uber. Like I even kept it on him for a little longer. RJ already knows he's hurt, but for Zuki to have an extra 35 health or so is very, very big. Now I'm kind of saying with RJ in case we need to go for a pick, but we got mold, so we don't need to pressure anymore, and now I leave. Crit heal Watterson on the way in because our sniper's still alive. Eyeing the scout on point. Yeah, look, we have three guys looking at point. And I don't know where... Oh, Aaron's dead. Oh, he just died right now. Okay, so I guess that's the fight going on in Bathhouse, but like after Uber. What else? Sayath dies, so that's scout. Now, I kind of just saw the pyro on our end, and I thought he would fight towards point, but then he just turns toward me. So that, Nixie just straight misses a shot. Like, he, he should have just hit me. Did you see that? I didn't even notice that. Goes and scopes back in a second time. No, he fights evil now. Okay. I actually thought Spring was more hurt than he was. For no reason. And yeah, we had no calls, obviously, because their flank is either dead or trying to fight ruins. Because we had no idea where JJ was this whole time. Now walking under the soldier, look at that. He has to shoot a rocket, like, straight down. And if he waits too long, then he's not going to hit me, so... Walking, like, baiting that you're walking away from the soldier, then changing direction, you take a lot less damage from the rocket, and you also get, like, the perfect surf, because it can't really shoot around you and juggle you. And now I try and strafe a little bit, because... Yeah, I strafe slightly to the right because if, imagine he hits a crazy like 180 air shot onto me, so I want to strafe a little bit just so he doesn't know exactly where I'm going to be. But then I get worried that if I strafe any farther, I might not make my surf back onto bats here and will die from fall damage. So I only get like a little bit of a second of air strafing before having to realign. Here I grab the pack just for fun. I mean, they're, what do they have? They have Spy up and Demo. So, like, with Demo, I would have died to, like, a stray something. And with Spy, like, a random gunshot would have killed me. So, yeah, to get in the pack there is good. All right. There we go. So, what are our takeaways? Yeah, we sort of just got out DM'd and their flank walked all over us. So, for the most part, it was hard to really make that much better decisions but i should talk to triple about how we want to play the beam in our ubers especially late into ubers and like how dp is expected to go or how many picks he's expected to get or if you you know how, how to keep him alive and things like that so talking to triple to keep him more alive and closer to me throughout ubers especially as they get later and also in overtimes when I call that I'm going to be healing him. I think it's very important as medic that you call when you're tanking someone. So I'll say like, okay, I'm healing our demo or I'm taking our sniper and stuff. But maybe for triple, it's like a little bit of like, I'm kind of baiting with that call because if I say, okay, I'm tanking you, then suddenly he runs too far and I stop healing him. Well, it's like, well, why did you stop healing me? You said you're going to tank me, right? So maybe that could be it. I don't know. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, talking to our flank about what we're doing in Ubers. Um, also, I guess just talking about our team and, like, when to group up around me. Because, yeah, this is most, like, very good play from their team. And, you know, our team has some roster changes and some struggles with some of this stuff as well. But I feel like all in all, it played pretty well. And it was a very insightful demo because, especially watching the cast, it's pretty easy to be a little hard on myself. But I think this is a super insightful thing to do just for me and from my perspective and now i'm very much prepared to go into the team demo review as well so thanks for watching see you